Now, listen up to this next story, and I mean that quite literally. When it comes to hearing loss, it seems you reap what you sow when you're young. A new study shows that more than one billion teens and young adults worldwide are at risk of hearing loss and could be heading for real hearing problems in their later years. I'm joined now by audiologist Mampo Dlulani, who joins us from Qabekha this evening. Uh, Mampo, thank you so much for your time. You know, even when I was a teen, and that is a long time ago, uh, listening to loud music was very much a feature of being a rebellious youngster. So what is it about the way youngsters listen to music today that has the study raising alarm bells? Hi, Sally. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, I'm so glad we're having this conversation, mostly because um, the World Health Organization's theme for hearing care this year is listen safely and well here for life. And yes, so it's, it's one of those where hearing loss is such a subtle thing. Um, so really, it could be from anything from personal listening devices to loudspeakers, where we are out in public places, be it in our personal space. So yes, um, loud noises are everywhere, really. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they've been around for a long time. Is there something inherently more tricky or dangerous with the in-ear um, ear pods. I mean, I'm using one right now to hear you. Um, we often listen to the, you know, we listen to our music, we listen to our podcasts, we pop these in-ear uh, speakers into our ears. Are they more problematic than the more traditional over-ear over headphones? Not particularly. Interesting with, especially the newer technology of listening devices coming in, you'll get a lot of um, devices that do actually warn you when you reach a certain um, sound level. So if it does become too loud, often your phone will let you know, listen, now you are listening at an unsafe level, and could you turn it down? A lot of people ignore it, um, mostly because, I mean, we do enjoy music, we do enjoy listening to videos loud and clearly, but also sometimes, oftentimes, to the detriment of our hearing. Yeah, so why the concern now? If this has been an issue since, since loud music was invented, uh, why, why is the study raising alarm bells right now? Why are they saying that there's a billion youngsters who could be heading for serious hearing loss? Are they taking more risks than perhaps my generation in terms of their hearing and what they're listening to? Not particularly that. I think also because... We don't talk much about hearing. I mean, there are a lot of people from your generation that would now come in with hearing loss and they'll talk about their, you know, concert days and how fun things were back then. But now the ears are ringing, they aren't hearing their spouses clearly, they're fatiguing as they're trying to listen to conversation in groups and those situations. So it's definitely always been there. but. Again, because hearing or when a person isn't hearing clearly, it's not something you can overtly see. So it's one of those where it's, a, it's an invisible disability and we do definitely try to get a lot more awareness out as SAAA, as SASHLA. And we're trying to have these conversations more now because, I mean, there's a lot more access to personal devices. I mean, we do go out, I would say, maybe a lot more than you did <laughs> way back <laughs> when, but it's, it's definitely us as audiologists saying, listen, but also listen safely, because yeah. as much as we like seeing people, we, we'd rather not see you for hearing loss. So if we can prevent it, that will always be our first go-to before we manage hearing you, loss. Yeah, you did mention that a lot of the new devices, some of the, the headphones have sort of limiting, especially for the little ones. Um, of course, you can override that. But is there a way, I mean, this study says that you're supposed to live, uh, listen um, at 85 decibel as the highest. Anything over that, up to 105, is what a lot of people are listening at. 
and that over the long term can be very damaging. Is there any way to tell when you're listening at an unsafe level? I mean, is it just that it's uncomfortable? Because I would imagine as you get more and more hard of hearing, uh, you need to push that sound up anyway. So how do you know what you're doing is damaging to your ears? It's, well, firstly, any time a sound is vibrating, that's when you definitely know it's too loud. And also sometimes someone will be listening. I mean, they're not even that close to you and you can hear what they're listening to. That's definitely too loud. So it's a personal device so that you can hear. But if the earphones aren't in my ears, I shouldn't be able to hear what you're actually listening to. Um, so it's those sort of things where if you're sitting right by a speaker, let's say you're at an event, you're at church, you are um, at a concert and you're sitting right up against that speaker and that sound is vibrating, best believe it will cause some damage to the auditory pathway. Yeah, and I really hope, uh, you know, it's the sort of thing at my age you start really paying attention to. <laughs> but youngsters tend not to listen to their parents uh, when they're teenagers. Um, and like with many things, such as wearing your sunscreen when you're young, you only realize when you're older, I really should have listened to my mum. <laughs> but thank you very much. And a very interesting study showing uh, the hearing risks uh, for our young people. Audiologist Mampo Glulani, thank you so much for chatting to us.